Shalom. Hi. Uh, it is uh, Sunday, um, April 16, 2023. And uh, I am not in a, in a church because I have the church in my home as I have uh, heaven. Uh, inside my home and all those spirits I don't know how many it is but it's crowded here sometimes and sometimes it isn't uh, because they do some work and I'm not uh, gathering here uh, but it always some someone from the spirit world that is here and uh, I did after I recording yesterday uh, did I sign up for uh, to go to the dentist as uh, as I got more money uh, from you my listener and uh, so I have uh, money from you that have given me that f- feel this that you should send me some money and uh, that was enough at least to go to the dentist and uh, and they check out what's going on with my my mouth and um and then uh, I, I will see what they are saying about uh, how to repair the teeth, or if I have to, if they need to take them out from my mouth. But that is very hard because that glue that is placed on on my old teeth uh, they should be there the glue they should it's more glue than super glue and you know it's very hard to uh, take that away and and I have that uh, in my mouth because uh, it was I was scared, scared about my mother's teeth because she had, uh, she lost her teeth, she say, when she was a young girl and, and I, I, I have always a question about that, how she could lose her teeth in so young age and I have not uh, checked it out if there is what they do in in a Jewish tradition to uh, take out the teeth uh, of the maybe only the girls Uh, because I have seen that on um, other in other religions that they they pull out their teeth for the for the I think it's on the girl side because when when they be married they should not smile at other men and look nice to them I think it have something with that to do. I have not checked it out, but I will uh, check it out today because it's come to my mind now. Uh, that why that's why my mother didn't have teeth, and um, and I have not. I didn't ask her, but I thought it was very strange that she had no teeth. Uh, and uh, she say that it was when she, uh, just when she got married, uh, she lost her teeth. 
So maybe it's something with that and I can find out more uh, where she come from. Uh, uh, it's uh, only that my mother told me sometimes that her father was very, uh, very powerful man and hard to his girl. He had no... He was not an emo emotional person uh, like that, my mother say, and I accept it in that way without uh, asking her something more because I didn't know how a father should look, should be like because my father was n never at home. You know, he was an alcoholic girl. And uh, like he he was coming, he was also from Jewish line, and uh, up in Russia, and it's come with the drinking habits, and then uh, I didn't know, but he maybe was sitting and drinking with uh, with people that. He maybe didn't know that uh, they were related, but they were Jewish, and they had this to drink very much in, in their uh, genes, because uh, the, it he was very much together with people that was artists and actors in movies, and he had lots of money. My father. And he was drinking at in the nice restaurants, and uh, it was only people with money that was sitting there. So, so he come to be friends with all famous people that was in a, in the south of Sweden on the on the east coast. I. I am born in Vestavik. And then, then he, when they divorced my mother and father, he, he lived in Stockholm and he died in Stockholm. And there he met more famous people. And he, when I visited him in in Stockholm, he always wanted to go to, to a very expensive places, luxury places, and uh, it maybe could have changed my life in that way. But you know, the, what have happened? That have been in our destiny. It's what it should be in that way so we can't say I, I regret that I did these things and uh, and that I I didn't listen to what my parents was telling me and uh, I did uh, walk that way that I should walk even if it was wrong so was it in my destiny to to do so and it was order from heaven to be like that and uh, in the in the end uh, of the walking uh, it should be that you be more humble and see things in a different way and uh, heaven could take contact with you but in every step you have taken, in uh, it's a spirit on me that saying these things, uh, that every step you have taken was order from heaven. Uh, but in uh, some ways, they can't hold your hand in the walking the whole time and and they 
uh, saying to me now when uh, they are coming here. I am. I have many uh, spirits that is here now, and they say that uh, that they were thinking, and they were hoping that you should learn how to walk, because like a baby, they have to let you go, and uh, make your own way. But uh, but uh, in the foundation, in your first walking, they want you to learn of that walking, to avoid it, to not go there where you saw it was evil things going on. And they led you by your hand because you were a child. And when, when they see that this child is growing up, and we have to let that child go to, to he or she's adult life on, on its own. And that's when it starts to be very bad. But in the beginning, it was bad also in in your life, uh, in your childhood. But that was the meaning of it, to make you be stronger and not weaker, to make you see things that is not right, and not let let you let you go there. But you'd. You took in the negative inside you in this walk instead of the good thing. And uh, they, uh, they are saying this to me. Tell them, tell them. And I, I am going to tell you about my walk that it was evil around me in everything it was much drinking it was much lies it was child abuse and many things but I saw it I saw it I I didn't go with them I didn't change my way to to think about life and and the I knew it was wrong what they did uh, uh, already as a child because I had the ears and the eyes with me to could understand it. This is not right. But then uh, I lost the grip and they let me go out in the adult world. And I started, like my father, to start to drink. I drink very much uh, for some few years, not many years. And um, and I I was on my way to walk, be a, like a copy of my father's life. And uh, and my mother tried to to make me start to take pills also about when I was about 14 years old when it started these teenager things in in the body and she in some way I don't uh, blame her because she was told she was raised like that in in her childhood and uh, it's also that uh, she was weak so she uh, she did what uh, the devil was whispering in her ears so i don't blame you that have done wrong things i will only tell you what's happened in your life why you come to 
that place where you are now and you have hard to let you come loose and uh, and step away from it i know for example uh, before i started this podcast uh, recording today uh, that i i saw that no one had uh, been at least in uh, in SoundCloud, where I recording first uh, uh, and place it there, and I saw there was no one that have listened at my podcast uh, in in about twelve hours, and uh, and uh, in a day in the week. There is always some people from United States that listen uh, in, before they going to bed, and I get the statistic from you in United States, and now it has started with Canada also. That I see that in the morning when I wake up, but you are sleeping, but I see the statistic that you were listen at the podcast before going to bed and um, and uh, uh, today it was no one that have listened at the podcast and uh, it's the night between saturday and sunday and uh, and uh, i was thinking they are they have maybe much going on on Saturday evening, so they be drunk and and then they fall to sleep and not listen like they mostly do, and uh, and it's judgment. I know it's judgment, but I uh, it was one way I was thinking. Why is it no one that listen and then. Also, in in a positive way for you to see it, but for me, is it not positive? But uh, I was I am thinking because this happened every Sunday, and I I'm thinking that they go to bed early for to go up early in the morning to to go to their church. And on Sundays, those that have Sunday as a as a church day, and uh, and some have Saturday, and they maybe not believe in in what the church are saying, but they go there in the morning to have this social meeting. To know what's have going on in the week for people, not to listen to what God will tell them, but to to meet uh, friends and family, relatives, and want to hear the news for the week, and then they go there, and uh, that is the negative way and and you know that uh, i'm i'm not in the church because it's a uh, it's like talking a fairy tale when talking uh, um preaching and they don't really explain for you they uh, they bring up what they want you to to hear because that give them more money if they tell you things that you like to hear and then you be happy and then you give them a bigger check and um, so uh, it is uh, there is a churches of course and uh, traditions places 
that can say uh, real good things. Um, but what what they don't tell show you and tell you is what's going on after that when the ceremony have have ended when you go out from the church. I know many of you, I don't judge every one of you, uh, but there, it's a problem that people, as soon as they go out, they start to smoke cigarettes uh, and lean on, on the church walls and smoke. And and I have been in this, as I have lived in United States, and I was in the church much, much, much more than normal, and uh, and they, as soon as they go out from the church, <coughs> people I was going with, uh, in the cars, the vans church vans so as soon as they come in into the car they start to screaming and cussing and uh, swearing and do bad things talking so very bad and uh, and that's uh, I was sitting and thinking that the the preaching what was going on in the church have not taken any effect at all. The people are uh, like they are holy people inside a building, and then uh, and then they have not listened. They only uh, want to pretend that they are so very good. I I I saw it. And God wanted me to see it. So I understand the whole picture of it. And I tell you, I have already made some people angry at me because I have said this. But I I don't talk about everyone. I talk about some people that do that. And that make me also see it in the statistic for the podcast because it's different from day to day. And it's the same statistic going on now. It started, I think it started October 2020, the podcast. So it's had going on for a long time. And I have done about... I don't know, but uh, 450 episodes. So it's showing me now what's going on. And uh, and of course, like I have said the whole time, that uh, you maybe are listening at this podcast episode in 2026, for example. So it's not what's going on today only, because it's repeating. It's repeating itself. I don't need to say today in 16, April 16, 2023, is this going on? Because it's going on the whole time. Is repeating itself the, with uh, different people, but the same way to look at life, uh, look at God, and look ab- about everything in reality, and defending of yourself, and say that can't be true. I'm not like that. And, um, and it have going on from generation to generation. And um, um, 
it's someone that talk it to me. <laughs> I know what who it is because today uh, I was uh, checking out some in the family tree and uh, they show up in my family tree a family from Ireland that I didn't know so maybe it will be that every time I recording now it's coming up my island ancestors and uh, so it was about Ricky Nelson the singer it's a uh, is for us old but you maybe have heard him you that is young Ricky Nelson I think he he, he died in a, in a fly airplane accident in the late 80s but uh, I know I come to know that uh, Ricky Nelson wasn't Nelson like uh, English Nelson uh, sure name uh, it is from Nilsson I was born Nilsson and uh, uh, my father was very much Nilsson but then I found out that my mother had also Nilsson because it's very common sure name in Sweden uh, in the old days because today they they can uh, change their sure name to other names that uh, they uh, uh, find out that they uh, should love to have those names so they change it today but before 19 70 about that uh, people had what they were born with the last names but uh, after 1970 does it be popular to either spell the the short names the last names spelling it differently and um, and uh, or they uh, change it to be a new sure last name to have and uh, so i didn't see it before my family tree that my my mother had also nelson nilsson in her tree and um, uh, Ricky Nelson is uh, on my mother's uh, family tree and uh, I don't know how close they are but Ricky Nelson is um, also connected to Elvis Presley and I find out that I was connected to Elvis Presley uh, because he, his mother was Jewish and so and uh, it seems like Elvis Presley is um, like his grave his grave uh, is in two places one one uh, for Christianity and one Jewish it seems like that because I have seen two two different picture of the cemetery where Elvis is laying he is not laying you know that but his uh, it's uh, the soil of where is some of Elvis is there um, but he is not there because he's in afterlife but they um, they are together and um, so uh, today I was looking at 
Ricky Nelson again and I trace his uh, branch and then I find my that we come from Ireland he and I <laughs> in our DNA and uh, the sure name in in Ireland before they moved to United States is a very strange last name. I think it's a short name. But the last name and short name is Or. Or. O R R. It's very strange. So I think it's have something longer name, but it was Irish. Uh, last uh, uh, name sure name so when they move to to United States they maybe change it to be shorter to could could pronounce it uh, for American people I don't know because I have not come so far because it is far back for about 200 years ago and, but they they lived the the one that moved to United States states lived in Londonderry Londonderry uh, there was he and she born and then they moved to United States and that was ancestors to Ricky Nelson and in that way also to Elvis Presley so I, and I laugh about when I found out this uh, both a singer or if it's a Arctic arts painting pictures like that is many that have is author famous author in my family tree and I, and on my mother's side and I laugh every time because my mother couldn't sing at all she sounds like a crow when she was singing and uh, and she couldn't she couldn't uh, drew a, a picture she never could do that well, she did, uh, did, uh, did a person, if she needed to explain by uh, making a drawing to me, or I ask her to draw something, then uh, she only could do it with uh, uh, lines. She couldn't, so I could see it was a person. She was so very bad. But then in, uh, but in my, uh, my, uh, I know my, uh, some of my cousins have been into music and been on the top list with music. So that that's, was like she didn't get it. But her, her, her sisters at least uh, had this, uh, my aunt on my mother's side, she was singing, uh, and but uh, she was singing in the church solo because she has a nice voice. <laughs> so it's very strange it have been so, but but I think uh, I got it from my father that I can sing and uh, make. Uh, paintings uh, and not from my mother's side or else it, they may be come together the DNA together my father's mother and make me could sing and make drawings I have done some illustration for books in the uh, United States uh, in Seattle and uh, the, 
the owner of this book publisher, she came to Copenhagen and wanted to meet me. So I was to uh, the hotel and uh, and eat dinner with her and was talking about uh, the illustration I did for this magazine. Um, and uh, so uh, that was the, the one I am trying to to put together what I was on my way to talk about today, uh, but it's hard when uh, when they are standing here in front of me and they touch me, the spirits here. Uh, so I have to ask them what they want, what they want to say and what they want, why they are touching me, and why why they are standing here, is about. Uh, I I think it's eight spirits standing in a line in front of me, and uh, they are not clear. It's they are in a gray scale. So I don't see them clearly, but I can count in them to be eight. And uh, I will see what they want to say. It looked like like my my father's side that they are. They are um, it was uh, the picture I have got from my first cousin that was a photographer. He sent me that picture of my grandfather's family on my father's side. And they are standing here. And I think they are eight on that picture that he sent me. And now my first cousin, he is in heaven. He uh, he died um, in February 2022. So he is... It's he's coming through, and I don't know why he pushed this family in front of him. Uh, I, I I don't know what, uh, but I remember that I was talking about my father a little more than I normally do. So that's why they come forward now. And uh, one of these, these uh, women that is standing in this group in front of me, she died when she was 104 years old. And I think it has something with that I was thinking this morning when I wake up this morning I was thinking about how, how life uh, that my father he died when he was 62 and my mother died when she was 80 years old but they were drinking and taking pills so they showed a short their life by the, the way they did and uh, and my uh, my uh, I don't know what it is but my my father's uh, aunt she she become she was 
still alive when my father died. And she was a teacher. And she had uh, at least two sisters was teacher. And they lived together. So they didn't have any any man in their life. They they maybe not had so much hard time, even if the, the they were teacher. But the the children in that time was much uh, what you say uh, better. But they listened at the teacher and did what the teachers told them, and not like they do today. The most of the kids. It's it's like, like the the kids are doing bad things to the teacher, and and the teach, teacher have to listen to the kids today. But it was not in their time, and they have this this that uh, they. It was a reminder message. They come that I should bicycle. <laughs> it's from that time when I, when I could uh, uh, do that. I can't do that anymore. Um, I I don't know if I say that to you, but uh, it's much spirit on me now very much and they maybe remind me what I should say in this recording and maybe they did this with a bicycle message that uh, I go to the dentist on Wednesday and uh, and I will see how much the bills the bill will be when I did my teeth for 10 years ago, it was, it was about uh, 3,000 US dollar, like 30,000 Swedish crowns. Uh, and um, and uh, uh, I saw it on their website it could be like uh, 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 like four thousand dollar for to help me with my teeth. I don't know what they will say, but I will tell you on after Wednesday. I will do a recording and tell you what the dentist told me. I had to take a little water. So that's what I am waiting for. And uh, I I waiting for this group of people that is standing in front of me if they want to say something, but it seems like they come forward because of what they maybe make me thinking about them in the morning when I wake up. So they touch me in the night, and it's a, it's a memory uh, that I got now that come in front of me. And my first cousin had placed them here. He pushed them. And I understand it now when I think about it. That, that my first cousin doesn't want to show him. He wants to hide. And that's what he do. I understand it now, what I see. He... Uh, there was no picture of him. I had a picture on him in my photo album that uh, I got 
from my mother when she died. And there was a picture of him, but that was when he was about 25 years old, twenty between 20 and 25 years old. So I thought I was looking for to have a picture of him as a, like a, a today. And then uh, when he died last February, he he said he had two sons and one son had placed a picture of him in in the somewhere i found it on on the internet a picture uh, that how he looked like just when after he before he died so i got it and placed it in in my family tree so that's what happened now that he push these people they had they was not talking talking but he was pushing them in front of him to hide himself behind them that's why they didn't say anything and uh, now when i i think about the picture that he was sending me it was very strange because because um, my uh, my grandfather when he was young in that picture he he was standing like like my brother is standing in all the picture when we were young he uh, standing behind everyone and like he they whisper in the ear of the mother of the but he is standing behind his sisters and uh, it seems like he whisper in their ear it's the same position like my brother have in all the pictures and he's standing all other people is front of him and he's standing behind so it's a line they're going on with our with those uh, men and my father he didn't hide but he was so dr- drunk so he didn't care or if he had been sober then he had hide because I have told you about my father that the the few times I saw him sober it was when I visited him in the hospital because there he couldn't drink and I didn't I didn't recognize my father he was so different when he was sober than when he, he was drinking and uh, so he was hiding person he also but he he would drink himself out from to hide and um, so uh, it's some kind of chain chain that is going in the uh, male men's uh, chain on, on my father's side and um, but his brother my father's brother he was in uh, our Swedish football team a goalkeeper uh, and uh, he was a very famous person so he wasn't so it's a mix of of these uh, genes going on. And my father was blonde, had blonde and blue eyes, but his brother that was in the football team, he, he was black hair, 
and brown eyes. So they were very different. It's very much a mixed uh, and hard to understand and understand the, the family tree in that way because it's so much hidden and so much mixed of it. So thank you for listening and, and God bless you. Thank you for listening.